A very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Tuesday edition of the show. Promises to be exciting as always. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Always a delight to have you join us to talk sports in London. I'm Austin Okonakban, the super eagles of Nigeria. We will not be at the Qatar 2022 FIFA World Cup. Shocking. After playing 1 1 with Ghana today in Abuja. Yeah, I mean, I'm in London. I'm not really feeling the heat, but what I saw on television, it's not good. I, th I thought it was a dream, but I know it's not. Mm. Um, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Um, I'm trying not to speak as a fan, but ultimately, we're all football fans. We all love the Super Eagles mm -hmm. of Nigeria. We have a job to do on the show. We'll do our best to, to do that job and also keep uh, the fans informed while we go along that journey. But also, I can tell you, on a personal note, personal experience, the last time I felt like this was in 2005. Similar scenario, Nigeria failing to qualify. In that case, it was Angola. And same, mm -hmm. pro probably same score line. Uh, we needed a win, got a draw and we didn't qualify. And I didn't want to start the show with that line you did, and now it's sinking in. It is sinking <laughs> in. And we have to remind ourselves that Nigeria will not be in Qatar. It is, it is painful. It is yeah. painful. It, it, is, it is what it is, you know? And uh, sometimes football just, you know, gives you some reality check. I think that's what happened with Nigeria and this... Uh, failure to qualify for the 2022 uh, FIFA World Cup. Check from when Gennot Raw was told to go to the fire brigade approach and bringing us to the Guavoin and then going to the AFCON and returning. There's just something missing in terms of, of thorough work, long-term planning, you know, and that's everything that is showing up now. Yeah. Shout out to Ghana for qualifying, but they also went through this path. Had a rough AFCON, but when it is Nigeria and Ghana, we've said it over and over again, then it's difficult. It's going to be tough. Um, hopefully, this will just make us sit back and say, okay, now we're not going to be at the World Cup. Can we sit down now, get into some deliberate planning, uh, find ways that we've been, we've been cutting corners to make things happen and start doing things the right way so we can take football uh, in Nigeria to the next level. Yeah, that's the hope. But uh, as is always the case, do we really learn? Do we really learn? Um, mm. co mm. Congratulations to Ghana, it must be said. Um, we, the, the team with a better plan won. Uh, but but from, from a neutral perspective, I mean, I mean, just look at your screen. Results from today, uh, Senegal and Egypt, I mean, we, we had to lick our wounds, and what a beautiful game of football they gave to us. Senegal and Egypt, winner had to be decided via penalties. Senegal scored a goal, and we, were, and we were seeing top-class players lose penalties. I mean, it was a tension-soaked game. At the end of the day, the Taranga Lions did a double over the Pharaohs of Egypt. The Taranga Lions will be in Qatar. Egypt, better luck next time. And so is the case for Nigeria. Uh, still feels like a bad dream, though. But uh, I need to pinch myself. And it's real. It's real. <laughs> and this... But, you know, the, the, the painful part in all of this, before we begin the analysis of the game, if your team, if, if your team loses to a better team, you say, well... Mm. But if your team lose to a team that even on the day was poor, the performance was abysmal, but they got the tactics spot on, that reflects on your team, and it means your team didn't play well at all. Uh, it's, it's really sad. And the post-mortem of all of this will be very difficult to know because we've been saying this for years. For years, we shot ourselves in the mm. foot. And now we're licking our wounds, but I, I do hope we learn. I do hope we learn. Hopefully we're going to learn this time around because I know um, it, it was a big ambition of the NFF to see the Super Eagles at the World Cup, and now it's not going to, to happen. We, we will leave 
tactical analysis, what should have been done, what wasn't done, uh, to our guests when they join us. And just let the viewers know that we try to line up some ex-internationals. Uh, Abbe George is in Liverpool, right in the United Kingdom with me. Remember Abbe George from our Super Eagles defender? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he will be joining us. Vincent Yama uh, is still trying to get over the defeats, but hopefully when he sits down, he will join us. Goalkeeping has been a major, major uh, problem for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. So I'd like to get Vincent Yama to talk about this also. See, when things go wrong, you don't cry and cry over them. You find a way to make them right. So in case, so just in case you get another opportunity, you won't make that same mistake. Because if we had qualified for the World Cup, everybody would sing and dance and say, oh, all is well. And we'll go to the World Cup again, another abysmal show, and then we come back and everybody continue where we stopped. So I'm just saying that hopefully this will give us an opportunity to plan properly, to be very deliberate with the things we want to do with our football, to have purpose uh, in our approach, uh, see good collaboration between the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development and the NFF and the different football associations, state councils. Everybody needs to come together now and say, look, since we glorify the World Cup so much and we will not be at the World Cup, let's make use, good use of that window and that period to develop football in the country. So it is what it is. In case you're just joining us, it's supposed tonight on Channel Television, the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Woo! We will not be at the 2022 FIFA World Cup after playing a 1-1 draw with the Black Stars of Ghana at the Moshu Dabiola National Stadium in Abuja. The first leg in Kumasi ended goalless, and we were thinking, Nigerian football fans were believing that, oh, since they didn't beat um, the Super Eagles in Accra, in, in Kumasi, that it will become, you know, better in Abuja today. Ghana got an, an early goal through Asnas Thomas Party, through Ekong, equalized for Nigeria from the sports. 1-1 one, one at halftime. We thought second half, there will be so much to give, but Ghana somehow tactically locked it up, ensured that the Super Eagles don't get into it, and that's it right there. Confirmation for you. It's ended Nigeria 1, Ghana 1, and on aggregate, it stayed 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Uh, Egypt and Mo Salah will not be at the Qatar 2022 <laughs> FIFA World Cup after losing 1-0 to Senegal in Dakar. The first leg, 1-0 in favor of Egypt. It had to go into penalties. And once again, their penalties, Senegal, the Taranga Lions beat Egypt to book their ticket to the World Cup. I'm still waiting to get George yeah. Abbey ready. Yeah, I mean, I'll just have you say one or two things when George Abbey is ready. We'll get into that conversation. Yeah. What, what, what's the mood in Lagos? You, you know, good, good you asked me that question. Everywhere is calm. Everywhere is calm. People are trying to find the right words. Um, the people try, people are hearing their frustration and all that. Reports reaching us, you know, uh, not good. Uh, the fans going berserk at um, the Abuja National Stadium. And um, I, I, I don't know what to say, uh, you know, because uh, emotions running wild. And, and of course, you, you've, you've listened to the news. It was a national tragedy the day before. I mean, a lot of people were expecting, okay, a good result will calm us down, soothe the nerves. Even if we had had a good result, we're still trying to recover from a national tragedy. Then this happens. Then, of course, the reports, uh, pictures beginning to circulate on social media, the fans going wild and, and, and all of this happening. Not really good. I, I mean, as for, as for the mood in Lagos, you know, uh, it's not good to say, but look, we, we've a lot. We, we, you know, a lot of us have seen our share of yeah. this kind of news. Uh, not, not what we wanted, but life goes on. People are trying to be calm. Some, some are really That's frustrated. It. Some mm. are really frustrated. Mm. Are we? we yeah, we know football fans can be so passionate. Yeah, I mean, we've done a good job trying to talk about this. Let's take it back to, uh, let's hand it to a football legend, a Super Eagles legend. George Abe played for Nigeria. He was a good defender back in the day. He joins us now on the show. He's right here in the United Kingdom. He's in Liverpool. Abe, George, good to have you on Sports Tonight. Thanks for having me. You know, it's, awesome. it's unfortunate. Awesome. We're, we're, we're coming on at a disappointing time. 
I know I struggled to. I was like, I hope George will not cancel. I'll be able to say one or two things. But thank you so much for being a professional. And I'm glad we can still to an extent laugh over this. What sort of game was it for you? I, I think um, for me, everyone is pointing fingers at the coaches and 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 rightly so to an extent, but the players have to take some responsibility. You know, mm. I was speaking to a, a friend just after the game and the, the little details in a football match like misplaced passes and, and crosses mm. being overhit, things like that is not the responsibility of a coach. Little details, mm. being professional enough to, to be, be focused on your passes, the keeper, for example, um, misplacing a ball to, to give the, the um, Ghanaian team a corner kick. Those little details are not the responsibility of a coach. Those are things players need to take responsibility for. So I agree with what you said earlier. This is um, a blessing in disguise because if we had made it to the World Cup, it kind of papers over the cracks. It, it, it seems like everything is well. We need to reset, we need to find a way to plan and, and put in place better quality organization on and off the pitch. Because when I look at the um, Senegal and Egypt game, the quality, there's a golf in quality, no disrespect to the Nigerian team. Like you said, we would have gone to the World Cup yeah. and probably end up losing all, all our group games and come, come back with the, an embarrassing showing at the World Cup. So we don't want that. We want to be better prepared. So when we get there, we deserve to be there and we can hold our own when we when we play against these top teams in the World Cup. Judge, tell, tell me, uh, what was missing today? I know back in the day, when you guys play for Nigeria, we see the hunger, we see the desire, we see the fight. Mm. Did you see all of that today? Mm. No. No, I always say that that's the, the, the number one basic requirement as a professional. When you put on that Super Eagles jersey, the whole nation is expecting you to go to war for us. This is not a time when you want to come and entertain, show skills and, 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 and dilly-dally on the ball, take your time and you're getting closed. Everything has to be crisp. From the start, we need warriors. We need players who are ready to bleed for the nation. And I didn't see any of that. You know, like you said, when we played, we played against some tough teams. So I remember playing in, in that same stadium against Algeria. We scored in the last minute. Joseph Yobo got the goal, one nil. And that's the desire. You keep going right up until the end. You keep putting pressure on the team. But um, unfortunately, we weren't good enough. As a collective, as a team, we weren't good enough. Nowhere near. The Ghanaians deserve to go. I'm not saying they were better than us, but they were better organized. When you look at the shape of the Ghanaian team, even though they didn't have any world-class players, they, they, they nullified all our threats and dealt with every <coughs> single question we asked them. They had an answer. All right, George, uh, thanks for joining us uh, once again. Yemi from uh, Lagos. Uh, it's good to see you. It's been a while. Uh, it's good to see you yeah. on, sc on screen. Um, I know you're an ex-player, and most of you shy away from blaming a former player like yourself. But I, but I have to ask. I have to ask. The tactics, did you think the coach got his tactics spot on? I know it's a hard thing to do. Most of you don't like criticizing players like yourself, but speak as a fan. As somebody who's won that jersey, do you I, think I, our, our tactics was right? Yeah, I think to start the game, it was right. The, 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 the personnel, the players he picked, we expected changes from the first game. And I think the, the, to start the game, we started the first half well, in my opinion. I think we, we played a good first half. Unfortunate to concede that goal. But second half, I think he should have tweaked the, the, the formation a little bit. I think bringing Egalo on closer to Osimen should have happened sooner, in my opinion. I think um, Osimen needed somebody close to him because as a lone striker, he was often fighting against two or three defenders, even in the first game. We needed someone to be closer to him, to give him that support. And in my opinion, we should have made those changes sooner rather than later.
Okay, let me let me throw this in. I've I've been privileged to ask uh, Peter Rufai this question, and because of what happened today and what happened at the Nations Cup, I also have to ask you now: Do you think we have a goalkeeping crisis? Do you think we have been able to select the best goalkeepers that we have in Nigeria? Well, without um, having the knowledge of all the keepers available to us, it's difficult for me to say whether we're picking the right keepers. But in my opinion, obviously, our colleague, our friend Vincent Ayama, has set this bar so high that every keeper that comes into the national team now, we're comparing, that's the level you need to reach. And unfortunately, we still haven't found a player capable of reaching anywhere near the level Vincent Ayama set. So unless we're going away from that standard, if we're just going based on what we have available, then we're going to keep chopping and changing until we find someone capable. If not, if we're looking to compare, then I'm afraid we, don't have, we haven't seen anyone near the level required to play for Nigeria. All right, one more. Um, I'll let Austin get back to uh, the conversation. I want you to settle this for us. You know, we're having a lot of conversations. Uh, in Lagos now, you're seeing two, three people, everybody gathering, everybody knows football. 200 million Nigerians are coaches. What is wrong with this team? Some will say it's an average team. Some will say we have good players. You know, and let's look away from the fact that we did not qualify for the World Cup. What is wrong with this team? I think, honestly, like, like you said earlier on, we don't like to criticize our, former, uh, our fellow professionals. But I don't think we're as good as we make out to, to be. I think we've got good individual players, but as a team, if you look even before Gennett Rowe um, lost his job, the results were inconsistent. I look back at the game against Sierra Leone at home when we were 4-1 up and we drew 4-4 at home, conceding silly goals. I think as a team, we're, we're not as good as we think. We've got the players that We've got the potential to be a good team, but we haven't shown it yet. So based on what we've seen, no, we're an average team. We're not as good as we think we are. George, let's talk about the positives. I believe there are some positives we, we can get from, from this disappointing you know, um, game that failed to give us the ticket to the World Cup. What did you see that this team did right today that we can consolidate upon? In, in just this qualification games against Ghana, I yeah. think um, in, in the first leg, I saw a team that was determined to fight for each other. So the team spirit is there. We, 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 that's not in question. It's never been in question that the team spirit and the togetherness is there, which is a good foundation to build on. To, to have a, a good team. But that's not enough. We still need to go out there and play as a team and be confident enough to express ourselves and find a way to change things in play. So when you see things are not working out, either within from the players or from the technical crew, find a way to change and find more solutions because it, it, it seems like once a team finds a way to stop us, we don't we don't have a next level. We don't have a, a, a gear two, a second level to change things like they call it a plan B. So we need to find a way. In my opinion, you know, we've we've got some good players, some individuals, but football is not an individual sport. You know, um, these players need to find a way to play together and to get the best out of each other. Whether, whether it comes from the technical crew or it comes from within, we need to find a way. We have to improve. We can do better. We know we can do better. So now it's time to go back to the drawing board, see what went wrong, and find solutions. We need to be together now. This is not a time to start 
pointing finger here. We, we have to take responsibility as a whole. The NFF, the technical crew, the players, is we win together, we lose together. Now it's time. And, and the players need to speak up as well. If they, if they think something is not right in the camp or the way they prepare for games or in training, they need to speak up because if they don't speak up, how can we fix these problems? So I think, yes, the, the positives is the team spirit. We have some talented players. Now we need to find a way to get the best out of these players. Yeah, Judge, from what you said, you sounded like you, you, you preferred what they did uh, in the first leg in Kumasi. Uh, though that one ended goalless, did the Super Eagles lose this ticket from that first leg? I've, I've heard a lot of people say this, uh, we lost the game in the first leg. But you've got to bear in mind, going away from home, playing against a well-organized Ghanaian team with their whole crowd behind them, it's not as easy as people make out. And it's not as if this, our, our Nigerian team, has been blowing away teams left, right, and center leading up to this game to give us that confidence that they could go to Ghana and beat Ghana 3-0. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that. When we played, in my opinion, we had a stronger squad. And I remember we went to places like Rwanda. We went to places like Lesotho. And we struggled to win in those places. We drew against Rwanda and we only beat Lesotho 1-0. Yekuba Yekbeni scored the one goal. So going to this away, away mm. African teams is not as easy as we make out. So for me, I was satisfied enough with the first leg, not conceding, we were solid. If Moses Simon would have took his chance, we had that one chance. Sometimes you can be, you can soak up pressure, hit them on a break, get the one goal, away we come, job done. So we would have been celebrating if Moses had scored that, that goal to give us a 1-0 win. But same way, the 0-0 was a solid enough performance. We, we wanted better, but 0-0, you've got to take it. And then to bring them back home, we had to be more disciplined. Conceding that first goal was a big, big blow because we knew the away goal rules uh, would send us out of the World Cup if, if we didn't get the winner. So I think conceding that first goal really put a dent in our hopes of qualifying for the World Cup. Yeah, let's talk about the quality of the defenders today. Uh, but let me first begin with the ch change that we saw. Calvin Bassi coming in at left back. Was that a tactical deficiency? I, I thought, um, I, uh, what was his name? Saidu was injured in the first game. But um, mm. if he wasn't injured, then I was surprised he didn't start this game. So we need to clarify that to know whether it was due to an injury or it was a, a tactical decision. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I I'm struggling for words, really, but we have a job to do. Uh, George, uh, it's good you're with us. We're just trying to, uh, you know, glean some things fr from the past and, and look at what is happening. You talk about the players that probably there's a need uh, to, to, to speak up. Most of the time, when blames are portioned, we already talk about a coach. So how much mm. of... How much of the blame do you think the players should take? Do you think the officials are culpable uh, as well in all of this? Because everybody is screaming about the coach. 75% mm. of everybody is screaming about the coach. So, but uh, as a player, as a former player, do you think players have a large portion of the blame? Do you think the officials share the blame? Do you think the fans as well? Because you, you've told us that you think we, we, we believe so much that we have a right to beat Ghana and our team is not as strong as it used to be. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, like, like I said earlier, it's a joint, it's a collective effort. When we lose, we all lose together. I think everyone has to take responsibility. And for me, the box stops with me first. I'm only speaking from my own experience. There was never a time when I lost. Not, we didn't lose many games when I played for the national team, but the, the few occasions where we lost, 
there was never a time when I thought, oh, the coach should have done this. Oh, the coach should have got his tactics. I always looked within first, my own performance, and then as a team, did we do enough to win? And if the question is no, maybe, okay, yeah, technically the coach can, can set us up in a different way or give us more information. Yes. But in terms of details in the game, decision-making, players need to take more responsibility. You, will you look in the mirror after the game and say, yes, I gave 100% or are you going to have regrets and say, I should have done this, I should have done this better, my quality of my crosses should have been better. When you've got strikers in the box waiting for crosses to come in and there's nothing coming in, then we start criticizing the strikers. Oh, we had all the strikers, we couldn't score. You need the service. You need those balls into the box. So it's a collective effort. The players have to, have to take a huge responsibility for this. Because at the end of the day, is their careers on the line. Not going to the World Cup, I know what it meant to me missing out on the 2006 World Cup. I couldn't sleep for days because I felt that was the only opportunity I had to ever showcase myself on the world stage. Whether I would have played or started or on the bench, at least I had the opportunity to stake a claim to be in the squad for that tournament. And it never happened because we went to Angola, we lost, thinking we were going to come to Nigeria and win, which never happened and we lost the place. So when you have an opportunity to fight to go and play at the biggest stage you will ever play as a footballer you have to go in there and give your all and i'm not sure these players can look at us or themselves in the mirror and say we did our utmost best because the quality as we saw especially in the second half was nowhere good enough all right you 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 played alongside um, jj or culture um gifted player, midfield maestro. What do you say to people who feel that the reason for our problems is because we don't have creative players in that mode? You know, we, we've seen teams who really don't have the classical number 10 do well. But there are still a lot mm. of people who feel the reason we, that we are OK, apart from the goalkeeping department, which a lot of people agree that we have problems. but the area where whatever formation we want to play, the area where we have problem is creative players. Do, do you think we are lacking in that department? I, I think we, we are lacking in that department in terms of creativity. But I think Nigerians need to, it's, it's high time we, yes, we respect and we acknowledge all JJ did for the national team, but we're never going to have another JJ or culture. That's, that's gone. We need to move on with the, with the times. Like you said, in modern day football now, watch Liverpool. Liverpool don't have the classical number 10, but they score goals for fun because everything is efficient, quick, precise. They press from the front. Everyone is in, in sync with the hard work, the pressing. Players like Mo Salah, Mane, we think these are just strikers who score goals. You want to see the work rate they put in for the team, which is appreciated by their teammates and the supporters. So until we realize we don't have a JJ, we have to find another way of creating opportunities for our strikers. And in my opinion, another way of creating is by pressing from the front. Because if you win the ball high up, you're closer to the opposition goal, and then you give yourself a better chance of scoring goals. So, yeah. JJ is gone. Unfortunately, we don't have another player of that ilk, but I believe we can still play and be successful without their classical number 10. I totally agree with you. Sports tonight on Channels Television. We are having a post mortem of that game between Nigeria and Ghana. It ended 1 1. And with that result, the Super Eagles of Nigeria will not be at the World Cup. Ghana will represent. Is, one of the Ghana as a major is one of the teams to represent Africa. It's sort of, sort of night. Nice. It's so difficult to speak English. You know what I'm saying? But let's just quickly read some of your messages. Uh, you can talk to us on Twitter channels underscore sports 
Uh, send us an email to sports tonight at channels tv.com. Uh, George Abbey made, made a comment, and Kalamazu seemed to be agreeing. He said, Honestly, I blame the coach for this misfortune. He invited three informed strikers and played with only one for almost the entirety of the two legs, only to bring Iyalo with 10 minutes left and Sadiq with three minutes left. That's too much firepower to keep on the bench for almost 180 minutes. You said so, George. And this um, this viewer is saying the same thing. Um, Bright Marvin says, this is the right time to stack a Guavon. He lacks technical ability to coach Nigeria. That's your opinion. Vincent Inyama, former Super Eagles goalkeeper, is trying to join us. Um, Vincent, if you can hear me, we'll need you to put on your video so we can get to see you and get your contribution uh, on the show. But let me throw this this same co good job. Thank you so much, Vincent. We'll get to you soon. And um, George, I want you to react to what Bright Marvin said. He says this is the right time to sack Eguavoy. He lacks technical ability to to coach Nigeria. Do you agree? Well, on 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 the basis of what we've seen so far, yes, it, it, it has to come into question. You know, I, I love Eguavoy. When I played under him, one of the best coaches I played under at the time. But based on results, then you've got to agree with the, the, um, the, the person who gave the opinion there. The coaches, the technical crew mm. has a lot to answer for. And I believe they will be having meetings with the NFF. It's not for me to say who loses the job or who gets a job, but they would have had um, um, criterias in place of what the demand was and the expectations of our national team. So if the expectation was qualifying for the World Cup or you lose your job if we don't, then unfortunately, yes, changes have to be made if it hasn't met the criteria and the standards set. Mm. Um, let me, let me, I'll still keep you, Vincent and Yama, if you can hear me, we need you now to come on the program. If you could just put on your video uh, so your, the, your fans will get to see you because we want to, to hear from you tonight. Vincent and Yama is from our Super Eagles goalkeeper, arguably one of the best this country has ever produced. Uh, Vincent and Yama, uh, if you're ready, I would like to get to speak to you now. Welcome to Sports Tonight. Uh, what's your take on, on, on tonight's game? Um, <clears throat> first of all, good evening to everyone here. And, um, and thank you, Austin, for the invite. For, for the invite. I really appreciate that the opportunity to speak to everyone. Um, even though I'm not, I might not stay long here because I'm this way past the time. But, uh, but I want to say that I'm, I'm really not one that a portion blends. I'm really not one that a portion blends because I'm like, I listen to, um, to George speak a few minutes ago that we win together, we lose together. So this is actually the situation. And um, I took the same line. It is time we face the future and, um, and keep moving. I don't want to question blames. I don't want to say this happened or that happened or this should have happened or this, the other one should have happened. This didn't do well, this did well. I'm really not one of those. So we move on. We take our lessons and then we face the future and correct them. Before I let you go, goalkeeping has been a major discussion amongst football fans in Nigeria. And they always say it was Vincent in Yama's time that we had a good goalkeeper last. With what you've seen with the current goalkeepers in the Super Eagle squad, what's the problem? Is it lack of confidence because they are young? Um, why are we struggling with goalkeeping? I like I listened to what George also said the other time. Mm, we can have another Hello. I can Hello. hear you go on, Vincent. I can hear you. 
Yeah, like uh, like, George, like George like George said a few moments ago that uh, we can have another judge of culture. Same that we can have another Vincent Tama. It's the truth. What I did for Nigeria, you can really comprehend. You know, you guys um, uh, we can. I mean, we can. We it's it's time that we tell. But um, like I'm going to say, we have to do with what we have. There's um, I really didn't watch the match. I didn't really see what happened, but the truth is that um, there is only one Vincent Tiyama and we only have to live with what we have and encourage them and support them. These guys need confidence. It, it's sad, it's sad that I before the game, everyone is talking about goalkeeping. It's sad that before the game, these guys have to go through massive pressure to live up to the billing. Everyone wants another Vincent Tiyama in Uzo. Everyone wants another Vincent Tiyama in um, Akwei. Everybody wants another Vincent Tiyama in uh, um, Okoye, which is going to be very difficult. This thing is putting massive pressure on these young lads. I just want us to forget about Vincent Tiyama for now, which I know is going to be very difficult because of what I did. But we should support those guys. We should encourage them. They're, they're going into the match with massive pressure on their shoulders. I know what I went through when I was playing. Uh, luckily for me, I didn't have anyone that um, I had to be compared to. Oh, he, did, he should have done like this or like that. Luckily, I was um, I stood shoulder to all, um, I mean, amongst my peers. And um, I was the hero most times for the country. Thanks to God, thanks to His grace, but we should just support these guys to go on. Imagine Akwei walking into the goalpost and they expect him to keep a clean sheet because Vincent Tema did something like that against Argentina. Vincent Tema did something like that against these countries. They should just forget about this. And when Akwei walks into the goal, when Uzao walks into the goal, when Okoye walks into the goal, they should just know that it's Okoye that is there. That is not Vincent Tiyama they want to see because this is also a big problem for the Nigerian goalies. Everybody is comparing them to Vincent Tiyama. I can understand Nigeria wants the best. Nigeria is a country that, is the, that wants the best. Unfortunately, there's no more Vincent Tiyama in the build, in the build up, in the setup. We should support whosoever is out there. We should encourage these guys. We should support them. It, it pains me to, to see that every after every match, he's a goalie, he's a goalie, he's a goalie. Mm. He's a goalie. It pains me, it pains me, it gives me headache. Let's not trade blames, let's not call names, let's not put uh, goalkeepers under any form of pressure. But we will not be at the World Cup. How much loss is this for football in Nigeria? Of course, like George Elia said, I mean, it's first, first and foremost, it goes to the players. We, we're not going to sell our market. We're not going to showcase our talent. There are so many players that have made um, transfers, that have made changes, that have made all sorts of things, and new contracts because of the World Cup, you know. So this is um, not going to be the case. I mean, hopefully that um, hopefully that these guys um, will succeed from another source. Um, it's a, it's a, it's gonna be a loss, a huge loss to, to the to the country because a whole lot of businesses would have been set up, you know, for the World Cup. A whole lot of businesses would have been. It's a massive loss. It's a massive, massive loss. It's a massive, massive loss. So, um, I really don't know how to quantify it in words and um, quantify it in naira and kobo, but I think um, the whole country will feel it. Thank you so much, Vincent Yama, for your time. We'll get you on the show again to, you know, uh, continue this conversation. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. All right. Let me go back. Let me come back to, to George Abe. You listened to Vincent Yama, and uh, he talked about this isn't the time for us to trade blames. You mentioned that. But this failure to qualify for the World Cup, I'll ask right. you to how much of an Austin, loss is it? Austin, I, I need to quickly, I need to quickly uh, bought in uh, pictures right there on your screen showing fans going berserk. I talked about it earlier. Ugly scenes 
that we don't want to see in Nigerian football in the aftermath of Nigeria's failure to qualify for the World Cup. Austin, you asked me about the mood in Nigeria, in Lagos. Pictures right there on your screen. Um, really sad, really sad. Um, of course, we are monitoring news, filtering in, but this was in the immediate aftermath of uh, the game, and I talked about it uh, earlier. And emotion spilling out of control from the fans right uh, at the stadium. So that's the situation report uh, of what happened, and of course, we'll give you more details on this uh, in our subsequent uh, bulletins. All right, so that's it. Um, George, let me get your thoughts. I mean, these are things you don't want to see. We, we are, we're all sad that the Super Eagles did not qualify. But to make players endure this, to see this, it could be discouraging for players who want to play for Nigeria. And, and even the mood in the country, you don't want to be seeing this. That's, that's, that's a, a sad state of event. That's, a, that's exactly what we're saying. Playing for Nigeria is not, it's not like any other team. Or there's, there's a pressure that comes with playing for the national team. If you win, they will love you. You're the hero. You're the best. You lose. And this is an example of what could happen. You know, we don't like to see all this type of things, but Nigerians are passionate. They're emotional. When it comes to their football, they will argue with you to the last death that their players are the best in the world. Even in the, in the first game, someone was arguing with me on Instagram that the Ghanaians, um, the, the penalty decision was a penalty for Nigeria. And I said, no, I disagree. It was a foul leading up to the penalty. Oh, no, no, no. The referee was biased. He was giving all the Ghanaians all the uh, decisions. You know, so when we see stuff like this, like you said, it gives the players the anxiety of coming to play for Nigeria. If players are thinking about changing, switching allegiance or, or, or nationalities to come and play for Nigeria, when you see scenes like this and you see pictures like this, it makes you think twice. After the African nations mm -hmm. got, we see what happened with um, Okoye after his um, mm. his mistake for the goal, which could have been, we've seen De Gea for Manchester United concede cheaper goals than that. De he received death threats. He received, oh, you, I wish you get cancer and die. I wish your family all that. You know, all this type of things. And this is football. But in the case of Nigeria, it seems like it's life or death. Football is life or death. You win, you're a hero. You lose, we want you dead. And All that's right. what happens when you play for Nigeria, unfortunately. You don't want to see it, but that's yeah. the way it is in Nigeria. Re really sad. I, 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 yeah, I really wish we had more time, but uh, that's how we yes. have to wrap things up on the show. George Abbey, I want to thank you for your time on the show today. It was really refreshing seeing you, hearing your voice, and having your inputs on the show. Hopefully we'll do this again some other time. All right. Thank Thanks you. for having me. All right. That's the show today. We uh, yeah. really hope you do. Uh, you did enjoy what we brought to you. We say no to vandalism. That stadium cost a lot of money, and hopefully uh, everything will be brought under control. That's the show today. We'll be back here again tomorrow. I'm Imadebaya. Bye-bye now.